Do rising grocery prices have you overwhelmed and stressed out? You might actually be making some mistakes while shopping, which are costing you money. We know because we've made all of them. We're all feeling the pinch in the pocketbook. And maybe going over your grocery budget each month is becoming an all too common occurrence. So in this video, we'll give you straightforward to the point advice so that the next time you walk into the grocery store, you can walk out of the grocery store with a smile on your face, feeling like you just beat the system. One of the habits that we're going to discuss on this video, Hope and I actually disagree about. So stay tuned. Be watching for that and make sure you chime in in the comments section. If you don't know us, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. We will talk about a number of habits in this video. And one of them is the single most common mistake that we see people making. So be sure to be listening for that. And here's the first one on our list. And that's shopping without knowing what you have on hand at home. A person in this position hasn't first done an inventory mm -hmm. on what they already have. So they end up buying twos and threes of an item that, gee, they just really didn't need. The second mistake is shopping without a prioritized list. Now you notice I use my very favorite word, prioritized <laughs> in that sentence. Nearly every list that I make is prioritized. But what is a prioritized grocery shopping list? A prioritized grocery shopping list includes the most important things that you really absolutely have to buy at the top of the list. How many of us have gone to the grocery store with a very limited amount of money on hand in order to purchase groceries, gotten all the way to the bottom of the list only to realize that there was something at the bottom of the list that you desperately needed to buy and yet you've already used your allotment that you had available for groceries. So the way over the years that I have come up with to avoid that is to make sure the most important items go at the top of that list. So as I work my way down toward the bottom, if I run out of money, I know those last two or three items on the list, they maybe can wait till next time. Another thing that people do is they go shopping without a calculator. Well, why is having a calculator important? This helps you get what I would call a level playing field with the food. Food. You can convert pounds to ounces and then you can bring it down to units of ounces to compare prices more accurately. The fourth mistake is interesting because it's actually shopping slowly. Slow shopping is a brand new sort of thing that stores are rolling out in order to encourage you to spend more time at their establishment because they know the more time that you spend there, the more money on average that you spend. So they will deliberately create this environment where you feel welcome, you feel warm, you feel cozy, you feel like you just want to stay where you're at. And that is exactly why you have things like restaurants now that are popping up in the corner of grocery stores because why not? You're going to eat there and then you're just going to meander through the grocery store picking up things here and there before you head home. Anything that store can do in order to make you feel like this is a place where you want to spend more time, that's what they're going to do. Here's another problem people have, walking every single aisle. Now, one of us actually is incredibly guilty of this. <laughs> That would be me because I am one of those people that feels like, oh, if I don't walk down that aisle, I might what? I might miss something. Now, stores in the past have always had all their markdowns in one specific area, but some stores, and tell me in the comments section if you've seen this, they are actually putting closeout deals and things like that scattered throughout the store, which means that in order to not to miss those, you have to walk the aisles. So they're hoping that you're going to go sharking around the whole store <laughs> looking for these and in the process, pick up some other items that weren't on your list. My family actually calls it sharking when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Another habit that will keep you spending more money at the grocery store is not checking the weekly flyers. Now, honestly, there's no excuse for not doing this anymore because of the fact that 
all major grocery stores have all of their sales flyers available online. You should be consulting those flyers and not only should you look at them, you should know exactly how to use them in order to maximize your savings. So the next problem that people have when grocery shopping is they are not shopping for two things. They're not shopping for loss leader items and they're not shopping for markdowns. Let's deal with those one at a time. Loss leader items are those items, usually they're like on the front of the grocery store flyer. Mm -hmm. The idea is they will lower those prices in order to get you into the store. And there'll be two or three of those items from each store flyer that you're really interested in. And they're hoping that you're gonna buy those items as well as everything else that is on your weekly shopping list. When you consistently plan your menu around loss leader items, then you will absolutely lower your grocery budget. Another thing that can keep you spending more money is not taking advantage of sale items mm -hmm. in that you're not buying enough of them. When you find something on sale and you have room in your pantry, you have room in your freezer or refrigerator, stock up on it. That's a good time to do it. On our program on Thursday, that video is going to be specifically about how to deal with groceries after you get home from the grocery store. What you do with those perishables the minute you walk in the door can have a vast effect on the average shelf life of those perishables, how long they'll last you, and whether you actually use them before they rot in your refrigerator. So make sure that you are subscribed to Under the Median so you don't miss that program coming up on Thursday. So we recommend that you buy all the way up to the limit that the store allows so you've taken the fullest advantage of that sale. Now we promised you that we would talk about markdowns. If you're unfamiliar with markdowns, markdowns are not necessarily items that are, you know, uh, bad, that they've gone bad and that's why they're selling them at a reduced price. There are a number of different reasons why stores will actually mark down an item. It may be they've decided not to carry that brand anymore, or they've decided not to carry that specific flavor anymore, or the manufacturer has actually changed the packaging and so the store wants to go ahead oh, yeah. and sell out all the old packages of that specific type of merchandise. So find those areas in your local store and then ask an employee in that specific department what time of day they do the markdowns. We actually had a whole program about mm -hmm. markdowns and about things that are the insider information on sales in your grocery store. We're gonna make sure that that video is linked up above and in the description of this video. Hope mentioned this earlier, but mm -hmm. another thing to look for is the loss leader items. When you get that flyer, plan your menu for mm -hmm. that week around those items and then go purchase those. Now, speaking of menu planning, one of the big mistakes we see people make when they are in the grocery store shopping is that they are unwilling to do what we like to call creative ingredient substitution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they find a recipe and really think that they have to have every single ingredient listed for that recipe in order to make the recipe. But we always call recipes around here just suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> and we do a lot of creative substituting. So before you go to the grocery store and grab those full price, high price ingredients in order to make specific recipes, ask yourself, do I have ingredients at home that will have the same basic effect on that recipe? And if you do, don't buy those ingredients. A lot of people like to go to the grocery store and buy what looks good. And boy, it's tempting <laughs> to do that. I think we're all tempted on that, but that's not a good idea if you're trying to save money. And the reason that everything looks good is because you are making the mistake of going to the grocery <laughs> store while you are hungry. When you're hungry, every single thing on that grocery store shelf looks good. Even kale. <laughs> A common mistake people make, and I don't think we really think a whole lot about this, yeah. is shopping by smell. You know, when you go through the store, they deliberately have little areas like the bakery or the deli, and boy, do they smell good. Or even the coffee, they have coffee bars. A lot of them have a Starbucks store inside. You walk by and you smell that, and you're hungry, and oh boy, it all looks good to you. That can be a big mistake, shopping by smell.
Here's another common mistake people make, and that's buying when you run out of an item. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, my mom and dad had a really good system for this. They had a little pantry in their kitchen, and when they were getting low on ketchup, let's say they had one more ketchup bottle left, they would write on a list by the microwave, ketchup. So they knew next time to go into the store to buy a bottle of ketchup. That way they would get one before it ran out. And this would give them some time to catch one on sale. That was very clever. Thank you. <laughs> Buying the biggest package may actually be wasting money. We mentioned this specifically because it just happened to us this week. We <laughs> went to Aldi intending to purchase some garlic powder and it was three ounces of garlic powder for 97 cents. I was like, oh no, we need like, we need, you know, I like garlic powder. Dude, we're gonna need a lot of garlic powder. So we need like one of the big old things like they sell at GFS, GFS or sell at <laughs> Sam's Club. Cause surely that's a lot more volume of garlic. It's gotta be cheaper even than what is sitting here on the shelf at Aldi. Believe it or not, it was almost twice the price of that garlic at Aldi's for 97 cents to buy it at GFS. So we sent our son after <laughs> the other garlic because <laughs> he was going to where that was pretty close to the store. So we've got our garlic now. That's why, as we mentioned earlier, it's very important to take a calculator with you if you're not sure. If you're comparing two of the same items that are on the shelf, one's a larger quantity than the other, bring it down to the ounces. How much is it per ounce? And then you'll know which one's really cheaper. Well, we're at our controversial point now. Dun, 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 dun. And, okay. And the controversy is coupons. Now, it isn't necessary for you to sit all day on Sunday afternoon going through the Sunday paper and cutting out all of those coupons. A lot of stores accept e-coupons, which if, you're, if you have their app, you can load those onto your phone and use those at the checkout for discounts. Okay, now it's my turn. I agree that one does not need to spend in this day and age a lot of time actually physically keep clipping coupons, but I disagree that coupons do not actually form a vital plan of action in the weekly grocery shopping budget. I think they can, but I think you need to do two really important things. One is don't do all the work yourself. <laughs> you should be following two or three or four of the lovely couponing websites out there that do all of the work for you. And then you should make sure that you are clipping those digital coupons where applicable, but, I will say in order to do that, you will need to have a shopper's loyalty card in most instances at that grocery store. Now we all know that what you are doing is signing up and they are going to be following your grocery shopping habits. You have to decide whether that is too invasive to your personal privacy or not, or whether you're willing to do that in order to get the digital coupons. So the heart of the controversy really involves this. I think that cutting coupons and just cutting coupons for everything you're going to buy is a big waste of time. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do it. You go to the store. I remember shopping with her with, during the big coupon days. <laughs> she had this big file box and she had them all categorized, you know, by, by dairy and meat and vegetables and cereals and so on. So we would get to the cereal aisle and she would go through all of her coupons. She'd finally pull one out. Oh, here's 50 cents <laughs> off for Rice Krispies. Oh, it's a expired. Gosh <laughs> darn it. So we've wasted all that time. No, I I hate coupons. That's why I love shopping at Aldi's. It's wonderful. And Sam's. They don't take coupons. You just go buy the item, put it in your cart, pay for it, you're out the door. All right, weigh in in the comments section. Coupons. Are they a vital part of shopping strategies these days, or can you just leave them at the curb and pretty much go for the cheapest store like Aldi and you're going to be okay with that? setting coupons to the side. <laughs> the next point we'd like to make is you may be shopping and making this mistake. You may be letting ready meals and deli deals deceive you. That's right, those ready-made meals that say just $5 serves four. Well, first of all, I don't know what four people these they are serving with that serving size, but it ain't the four people that live <laughs> in this house. Those ready-made meals are very expensive and they actually don't serve as much or 
as many as you would think that they would. Now, when it comes to the deli, there are also specific reasons why we have problems with the deli. Yeah, the deli and the bakery at stores are, of course, where they make most of their money. So you're really paying a lot of money to have somebody package and kind of pamper you with getting all the food prepared for you. Do it yourself. Buy individual ingredients and put it together at home and you'll save a lot of money. Here's another trick that they use. They will put one specific item that they know is going to be incredibly popular in the deli on sale. And then they will put that item in an attractive display case surrounded by lots of other things that go with that item that is on sale. <laughs> and not one of those other items surrounding it attractively are, are actually on sale. On sale. Yeah. Getting back to saving more money, a way to keep you from saving money is refusing to buy generic. You know, a lot of generic foods now at the store are actually major brands mm. in the disguise of a generic or a store brand. We've noticed this when we've gone to Aldi's to buy their generic cereals. They taste like major brand cereal. They're very good. And that's mm. the case with most generic foods these days. So you'll save quite a bit of money by sticking with the generic instead of your favorite brand. The next mistake that you may be making while shopping is just not being aware of the sales cycles. Sales run in very specific cycles. For instance, macaroni products will go on sale about once every eight or 10 or even 12 weeks. Specific products have specific sales cycles. Now in 2021, 22, 23, it actually has changed because the prices have risen. And what's happened is that stores have actually sort of as a reflex, they still have those sales cycles, but they are actually spread out a little bit longer than they generally were. So whereas they may have put macaroni on sale six times a year in say 2020. In 2023, you might actually see that sales cycle maybe every four times a year instead of six times a year. So just sort of reacclimate yourself, pay attention to those sales flyers and just make a note. Oh, macaroni is on sale. When is the next time that pasta products go on sale? That is the new sales cycle. Sales cycles still exist. They're just a little bit different. Not having a stock up budget will be detrimental in helping you save money at the grocery store. We always set aside a little bit of money that we can sort of use when we get there and they've got an item they're closing out and it's something we use and something that we'll keep then we can stock up on it because we have that money in surplus. So have a little surplus money available for when that happens. We actually have a specific formula that we mm -hmm. use for this. We take our monthly grocery budget and we divide it into fifths. So 20% of that monthly grocery budget is automatically set aside for stocking up. The other 80%, that's what we use for the four weeks out of the month. Not watching each item as it's being rung up at the checkout can be costing you money. I have a couple of really specific ways that I go out of my way to make the checkout clerk's life as easy as possible. I group like things together at the checkout. I also let the checkout clerk know if I have physical coupons that I'll be using on this transaction. I watch as items go through and let's say strawberries on sale. If I don't see it offering me that sale price as it's being rung up, oftentimes the checkout clerk will know they're going to offer that at the end and it should be taken off at the end of the receipt. Before you leave the store, make sure that you check through the receipt to verify the amounts that you've been charged, that they are correct. Another thing that might be keeping you from saving money is only looking at eye level for the items that are on the shelves. They generally put the more expensive items in the middle mm -hmm. and the items lower or higher will be your generics or your discounted items. So look high and look low in order to get those better prices. You will also find the larger packages of items on that lower shelf, but once again, do the math. Buying larger packages is not always necessarily the best deal. It's been proven statistically that if we shop too often, we're going to be paying out more money. So you don't want to be at the store on a regular basis. Set a time each month when you're going to go there, either once a week, once every two weeks, or maybe even once a month and stick to it. 
Another mistake you may be making is actually buying too much that is pre-cut. As a general rule of thumb, the more work that someone else does for you, the more money that item is going to cost you. I'm thinking specifically a lot in the produce section, even in the meat department. Anything that has been cut up from a whole form into pieces is going to cost you generally more per pound or ounce. Buying too much of a perishable item before you had a plan to use it up can be costing you money. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, Thursday we're going to do a show on what to do with these items after you bring them into your home. Buying an item at the store that you're at when you know it's cheaper at a second store could be costing you money. Mm -hmm. However, if the cost of driving to that mm -hmm. second store makes it not worth the extra savings, then go ahead and pick it up where you're at. Convenience foods like those muffin mixes or salad kits even, or anything which is a kit, which you basically just add water and maybe an egg or some milk or something, that is a convenience food. And they can be quite costly and cost you a lot more than putting those same foods together yourself. Here's one I didn't think about until we were doing some research on this. Stores give you these humongous carts. I mean, you could you could put a couple bales of hay in these carts in order to fill up. And so when you buy what's on your list, it looks like there's just a little bitty thing in your cart. And you think, well, we can put more in and more in, but that's how they get you to spend more money. Since the 1970s, carts have actually tripled in size at the grocery store. So don't fall for the big cart, little items scenario. Put in that cart what you intend to buy and don't worry about the size of that cart. We promised you the number one mistake that we see people make, and it is this. People actually shop without a grocery budget. <gasps> When you ask someone, what do you spend on groceries, they either don't know or they say, I spend what I need to. In short, that means that you actually don't have any goals set at all for what you will spend on food. And as long as that mm -hmm. continues to take place, you will continue to outspend what you should be spending or could be spending on groceries. We recommend setting a cap on what you're gonna mm -hmm. spend and then sticking to that. And that's another reason for bringing that calculator count up to the amount of money that you have budgeted. And when you get there, stop. In short, don't let the rising grocery prices run your budget. You decide what you are willing to spend and then you stick to it. Use some really great ideas, tips, and strategies every month to see if you can do a little better than you did the month before. You are not at the mercy of inflation. You are not at the mercy of what the food companies want to charge you for food. You are in control and you can take charge of your grocery budget. What else do we do to make our grocery budget work? Well, you can get all of our tips and strategies for grocery shopping. There'll be a link to that in the description of this video. And if you're interested in learning how grocery stores trick you into spending more money than you intended, watch the video that's right over there. You can get pre-cut onion in the frozen onion section. In the frozen onion section? <laughs> <laughs> All stores have a frozen have you, onion section. Have you section. not been to your frozen onion section <laughs> it lately? Is, it is little known. <laughs>